Hello everyone. Welcome back. My name is Moose Henderson and welcome back to Photographer's Monday where we help photographers beat the Monday blues by solving problems. And today we're going to take a look at winter gloves. I have a selection of winter gloves here and we're going to go through some of the benefits of gloves ranging all the way from when it just begins to get a little cold out there to when it gets down to roughly minus 50 and minus 60. Uh, I realize a lot of you may not ever experience those extremes, but I think it's important to cover the entire range from, let's say, you know, 40 degrees or so when we start to wear gloves all the way down to when it's it's so cold outside that it's almost survival weather. So we'll get started with our discussion on gloves. We're going to look at the anatomy of the hand. We're going to look at various kinds of gloves. We're going to look at some hand warmers. So we're going to cover the full gambit here. And I'll also give you an introduction to why I think I'm somewhat qualified to talk about this subject. So we'll get started right after this. Welcome back everybody. Let's start out with why I feel like I'm qualified to give you some advice uh, about winter gloves. I live in northwest Wyoming up in the mountains where our temperatures typically during the winter are in the negative teens to the negative 30s, sometimes down to minus 40. We get anywhere from four to six hundred inches of snow here in the valley. Before I moved to northwest Wyoming, I lived in the upper peninsula of Michigan near Lake Superior and it got relatively cold there also. We also had roughly 300 inches of snow there, so it was a good training ground. I've also been to Canada and all around the northern parts of the United States to take photographs so I've got quite a bit of winter experience. In addition to that, I spent two years in Russia. I worked in Siberia as a wildlife photographer for two years, which also included the winter, which in Siberia it's winter uh, more than half of the year. I would say eight to nine months out of the year, it is well below zero in Siberia. We experienced temperatures as low as minus 50, and I took a lot of images while I was in Siberia. A lot of my work was done in photography blinds where you're sitting still and your blood is not circulating very much. And so in those circumstances, you really experience the need for good winter gloves. In addition to that, I also attended medical school and I dissected a human cadaver. So we're going to talk about some of the anatomy of the hand and how to properly use hand warmers to be able to warm the, the fingertips and the thumb and stuff. It's important to do this properly because that way you're able to get the maximum benefit out of hand warmers. So, Let's get started with our discussion of gloves for photography. I live in America, so I'm going to be using the Fahrenheit scale, only because that is what is most familiar to me. I realize that the vast majority of the world uses the metric scale, and with that in mind, they refer to things in centigrade or Celsius, not in Fahrenheit. 
my apologies that I'm going to be using the Fahrenheit scale, but like I say, that's what I'm most familiar with. Now, the one thing to keep in mind is centigrade and Fahrenheit are exactly the same at minus 40 degrees. That's a crossing point where minus 40 Fahrenheit is exactly equal to minus 40 centigrade. Okay, let's say it's roughly 40 degrees Fahrenheit, maybe down in the high 30s, and you're starting to feel the need for some type of hand protection. In those cases, you're going to reach for what I call a liner type glove. It's, it's usually a lightweight glove. Now, if you get a regular type glove, like these that I'm holding in my hand here, the difficulty with these is you're unable to get your finger out to be able to adjust the screen in the back or to be able to press the shutter release. So it's important that you get gloves specifically made either for photography or hunting or something like that. Because in those circumstances, these gloves have the ability to get your finger outside the glove. Like you see here, there's a lip here and I can actually bring my finger outside the glove to be able to actuate the shutter release and also to be able to move the dials and to be able to adjust things on the back of my viewing screen. So it's important that you get gloves that have this ability. This is a really cheap pair. I think I paid, oh, I don't know, $13, $14 for them on Amazon, and they really look pretty cheap, but so far they're operating fairly well, and it does have the ability to get your thumb out also on these gloves. As the temperature begins to fall, you'll want to get gloves that are a little bit more robust, and that's when we move into a brand known as Manzella. There's a lot of different types of gloves, but these are the ones that I prefer, and I use the Manzella gloves from roughly 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees centigrade down to roughly the high teens or so. And what is outstanding about these gloves is they're a combination glove and a mitten. So you can see we have a mitten part that comes back here and attaches, and then the finger parts are like exposed. And when you need to, you can just cover up your fingers like that. But if you need to, you can bring your finger out and be able to adjust your screen. Or if you need to, you can bring your thumb out to be able to adjust the dials. Now I find these gloves work very well, as I say, down to the, I don't know, 15 degrees or so. Once it starts getting colder than 15 degrees, then I go to some serious cold weather gloves. My choice of serious cold weather gloves is made by a company called the Heat Company. And these gloves are made in Austria and they're designed specifically for the Special Forces to be able to fire rifles and things like that in the extreme cold of the Alps. They have two different varieties. They have what's called the Heat 2 and they have the Heat 3. I've got both varieties. The Heat 2 consists of an outer glove and I think this is uh, goat hide or something like that on the palm per portion and then some other type of fabric on the back portion here. It has a number of zippers in here and with these zippers you're able to expose fingers and whatnot so let me stick the glove on and you can see that by folding the mitten portion back and stapling it, that my hand is still 
covered by an inner glove. Now this inner glove does have pads on it to be able to adjust your touch screen and your thumb is also able to come out and it has a pad on it to be able to adjust your dials. And then you can easily stick your fingers back inside these gloves and they're well protected. These gloves have a zipper along the back side so you can put in a heating pad on the back side or you can also open up the finger side and stick a heating pad in here. We'll talk about the anatomy of gloves and where you should put your heating pads after we finish going over the various types of gloves. So this is Heat 2. These have the inner liner built in to the gloves. Now these are expensive. Uh, they're in the couple hundred dollar range. So they're outrageously expensive, but they really do an excellent job. Now we move up to what is called a Heat 3. Made by the same company, made by the Heat Company. And these do not have the inner liner in these. So let's say you put this on and your fingers are exposed when you bring them out. So these are designed a little larger and they're designed to actually use a variety of liners on the inside. And they sell a whole variety of liners that ranges from some fingerless liners all the way up to ones that are waterproof and, and various things like that. The liners that I have that I find mo most useful are ones that are made out of, I, thought, I think it's called Pyrena wool. And so this is the liner and you can see it has touch pads on two of the fingers and also a touch pad on the thumb. It also has a little pocket here in the back that you can put a heating pad and that way the heating pad is very close to the back of your hand. Now these liners are designed to go inside the gloves and then you're able to get your fingers out either all of them or only one of them at the time. The same thing for the thumb, you can get it out. Now, I find these gloves are very good down to about minus 30. So for most people in the United States, most people in Canada, things like that, this will be all you ever need. You're not going to need to go to anything more robust than these gloves because we very seldom ever get exposed to anything below minus 30. Now, like the Heat 2, these also have the ability to put a heating pad on the back side of the hand, or you can also put it here on the palm side of the hand. It does contain a strap that you can put around your wrist. That way, if you take these off for some reason and you still have your liner on, it doesn't fall to the ground and get buried in the snow. Now, when I was in Siberia, I experienced about three and a half months where it never got above minus 40. Now, those are temperatures that would typically be considered almost survival weather. I, I remember taking photographs in a photography blind when it was minus 47 and I was photographing some pheasants and I got to be honest with you, that was brutally cold. Uh, almost everything is covered. Uh, your nose, your mouth, you're wearing easily 40 pounds worth of clothes and parkas and things like that in order to stay warm. So what kind of gloves did I use in Siberia? I had a pair of these made by Northern Exposure and you can see they're huge. This is a comparison with my hand. It includes a finger, a thumb, and a big mitten. And when you stick your hand in here, 
it is toasty warm, even at minus 50. And the difficulty with these is it's very hard to take a picture when you have your hands in something like this. So how did I solve that problem? Well, part of the way that I solved the problem was I was wearing a regular liner like we saw just a little while ago, that this is the liner that's made out of wool. And so I would attach this with these clips to my parka. When I needed to photograph, I would simply pull my hand out. It's still protected by these wool gloves. Take my pictures. I could usually stand the cold in with only having this glove on for maybe five or six minutes. And then when it got to the point I couldn't deal with it anymore, I would rush and put it back in here and then it would warm up. Now these do not have any zippers on them to be able to put any type of hand warmers, but I never found that I needed any hand warmers with these. These are extremely thick. They come up high on the arm, almost to the elbow, and I never got cold in my hands while wearing these. So these are my recommendations of the gloves that you would wear in various temperatures, going from very simple, like at 40 degrees outside, to very, very thick and almost survival weather these gloves would do you well even in Antarctica. And you would be able to photograph in the dead of winter even in Antarctica. Okay, so the next thing we're going to ta talk about is using accessory hand warmers. And I'm sure everybody is familiar with this brand by Hot Hands. I know there's a lot of different brands out there. These are chemical hand warmers and these are chemical toe warmers and they do an excellent job of providing some supplementary heat. So let's talk about the anatomy of the hand. Now you have blood vessels that come down your arm on either side. You have the radial artery that comes down on the thumb side. You have the ulnar artery that comes down on the little finger side, and then they both meet up and cross in the middle of your palm. And you have an arch that goes across in the palm of your hand called the superficial arch, and under that you have another arch called the deep palmar arch. And both of those are formed by these arteries. Now the veins I'm not going to worry about because it's the arteries that we need the heat to have the blood flowing to the fingertips. Because if you've been out there when it's colder than stink, it's your fingertips that really begin to feel the cold. Now, when I've been out in the cold, the part of my hand that usually gets the coldest is the palmer side or the palm side of the fingertips. The back side of my hand usually does okay. So where I put hand warmers is on the palm side of the hand, not on the back side of the hand. And as I say, I'm trying to warm up the arterial blood that's going into the fingertips. You have digital arteries that splay off of, or anastomose if you rather use a med a medical term, that anastomose off of these arches and go into the fingers and into the thumb. So when using gloves like this, instead of putting the hand warmers in the back of the glove, in the back of the fingertip section, I put it in the palm section. And I do not put it up here by the fingertips. I put it down here next to the palm of my hand because that's where those arches are. And if you heat the blood that's coming from the radial and the ulna arteries and crosses in the deep 
Palmer Arch and the superficial Palmer Arch, that is going to heat the fingertips. And so I stick my hand warmers down in this portion of the glove, which is down here in the palm portion. And you have your choice of either hand warmers or toe warmers, but actually I find the toe warmer works much better because it has an adhesive pad on the back of the toe warmer and I can reach in there and put this adhesive pad right in here. It lies much flatter than does the hand warmer does. The hand warmer uh, tends to be a little bit thicker so I put that adhesive pad right down here in the palm portion of the hand and that heats up my arterial blood just enough to keep my fingertips nice and warm. Now when it gets really cold out there you know you kind of have to endure the cold. I mean this is going to heat it up a bit but it's not going to keep it like Arizona weather or something like that. You're still going to get a little bit cold. Now they do make what is called a USB hand warmer. These are little hand warmers that you can uh, charge up in your regular USB so socket ports and then you turn these hand warmers on, you put them in your pockets and then anytime you need to warm up your hands you stick your hands or your gloves in to your parka where you have this USB hand warmer and that will help to warm them up again and then you can pull them back out and use them again. So that pretty much covers the different gloves that I use. When it's really barely cold outside I just use a pair of liners. When it starts getting in the lower 30s to the teens, I use these Manzella gloves that have the combination, you know, mitten and exposed fingers. When it gets below the teens to roughly minus 30, I use either the Heat 2 or the Heat 3 gloves that has the liners. And then when it's below minus 30, down to minus 50, minus 60, that's as cold as I have experienced. I use these Northern Exposure gloves. Hopefully this will be useful for you. It's the middle of October now when we're just now going into the cold season. I'll put some links for these gloves down in the show notes section so you can uh, hit the show notes and be able to order some of these gloves if, you've, if you'd like to. There is a company, a distributor in North Carolina which sells these Heat 3 gloves and Heat 2 gloves. And I'll put a link down in the show notes where you're able to order those either from Amazon or direct from the distributor. It's the same price either way. Uh, there are no di discounts whether you order it from Amazon, b &H, or from the distributor directly from uh, North Carolina. Hopefully this video has been useful for you. If you would, hit the like icon and consider subscribing to our channel. We put out content every week. Sometimes we miss a week or two, like the last couple of weeks when I was teaching workshops almost nonstop. But we try to put out content every week or a couple of times a week. And I will see you again very soon on this channel for our next edition of Photographer's Monday. Goodbye.